okay uh, last week uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, uh, distribution that is mainly uh, discrete distribution then we talked about there are different types of discrete distribution uh, the first one is a binomial distribution which is very important today we will see some practical examples also Mm, what is this binomial distribution? Binomial mean you understand uh, there will be two results, success or failure. So there are some properties of this binomial distribution. We went through that. The probability range from zero to one. Uh, there's only two outcome, either success or failure. Uh, so that uh, this uh, probability can be converted into a different form okay so the probability of success denoted by p so on the other hand the probability of uh, failure how can we uh, indicate the probability of failure so that is one minus p so if it is uh, the total probability is one the total probability is one so one if it is one, the success, suppose let's say the probability P, success probability P. So the failure probability is one minus P. So either success or failure. So either way is possible. So let's look at uh, later on with some examples, how this uh, success and failure can be incorporated in terms of uh, the real world example, right? Uh, in that line, uh, further, some of the uh, examples on success and failure in two aspects, right? So that is why it is called as binomial distribution. Okay, that is why it's called as binomial distribution. Right, uh, some examples, uh, which these examples are not really uh, that we come across uh, in the day-to-day -day example. So the examples tossing a coin 15 times. We will take some example at the beginning, then we will look at what are the applications. Tossing a coin 15 times. This is a binary concept, right? So here n is 15. Tossing a coin 15 times, n is 15. Right, uh, another example, considering 20 patients. So 20 patients, this 20 is uh, N, and considering 1,000 people in a survey, the N is 1,000 in different forms, right? So this N can be uh, any value, uh, depend on uh, problem to problem. So the outcome, which is binary, the outcome is which is binary as we said success or failure if you toss a coin either you get a tail or head in each process for example if you talk about in agriculture right if you talk about in agriculture we can talk about binomial distribution what is that we can talk about binomial distribution in agriculture Let's say in agriculture, right? Uh, we have, uh, when you look at a plant, the plant is uh, susceptible or plant is resistant. Only two outcomes. Either plant is susceptible or plant is resistant. So suppose let's say you are having a chili plant uh, in the field. Then you observe for their uh, uh, severity of uh, the disease, a particular disease. Let's say leaf curl uh, virus. So look at the plant completely, whether this plant is affected or not affected. If the plant is affected, it is susceptible for the disease. If the plant is not affected, it is resistant to the, that particular disease. So that is how we can indicate 
the 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 binomial distribution uh, into a cone, right? So we can take plenty of examples. So success failure, probability of success. If it is a p, probability of success, the failure is definitely one minus p, because the total probabilities, as we said, always one. So if the success is p, the failure is one minus p. Okay. Right. So we talked about this uh, last time. So we don't want to uh, waste much time. So we'll go further. Uh, uh, taking uh, an example, tossing a coin, uh, two coins, tossing two coins. So if you toss two coins, what are the possible outcome? So the first uh, possible outcome from the coin one is uh, head and tail. So two possible outcome. Then from the coin two, another two possible outcome. So if you look at the cross product of all these, right? If you look at the cross product of all these, uh, you will end up with the sample space of uh, as such. Having head head, head tail, tail head, tail tail, right? So we can uh, look at the uh, uh, probability structure, right? As we discussed last time, we can look at the probability structure uh, based on the event, right? This is the event based on the random variable, discrete random variable. This is the probability. So let's say X is the event. I'll write it here, X is the uh, discrete random variable of getting number of heads, number of number of heads, right? So what are the possible number of heads here? Zero number of possible head, one head is possible, two head is possible. These are the maximum number of heads and the minimum number of heads possible, right? So we can find out the probabilities for each of these. So how many times possible out of four times, here out of four times, how many times possible that you get no head, one over four. Look at here, this is the only chance that you don't get head. In other three uh, occasion, you get the head. What about the getting one head? It is two upon getting uh, two head one upon two. so if you add all the values it should be equal to one so this is what we said the total probability is equal to one so this we have already said right now uh, if you look at the third example tossing a coin three times the same principle tossing a coin three times right so the possible outcomes are zero, one, two, and three. Maximum three heads are possible. <coughs> Their respective uh, outcome, which is the sample space, right? Respective outcome, which is the sample space. So that uh, the outcome for each of the case can be simply calculated from the sample space. So likewise, you can do it for any cases. Suppose if you toss five coins, 10 coins, very difficult to write down all the sample space. So if you, if you toss uh, five times, what, what, is the, what are the possible outcome? How many, what is the sample space? If you toss a coin uh, five times, if you toss a coin five times, what is the possibility? Anyone? If you toss a coin three times, eight outcomes are possible. Can somebody tell me, if you toss a coin five times, how many outcomes are possible? 32 outcomes. 
Once again, please. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yes, fine. Why? Because we have two possible outcomes. If you toss a coin at once, so how many times we are going to toss? Five times. So two to the power five, which is equal thirty-two. So thirty-two possible outcomes are possible in this uh, uh, five tosses. So you see, if we start writing down all the thirty-two outcomes, it takes time. Now we want to find out. So uh, what are, what is the event? What are the events? Zero number of head is possible. One head is possible. Two head is possible. Three head is possible. Four head is possible, and five head is possible. Now we want to find out what are the possible probability for each of these events. Right, so we'll have to calculate and so on. Let's look at uh, the shortcut how this could be easily done using the term called as probability density function. Right, probability density function that we have already uh, started uh, talking about. So, if you toss a coin five times, right, if you toss a coin five times. Uh, the question was asked: How many times I get three heads? If you toss a coin five times, right? If you toss a coin five times, how many times you get three heads? So that is the question. How many times you get three heads? Uh, the order is uh, not uh, important. How many times? You see, this is one time. This is how the other time is happening. This is the other time is happening. This is other time is happening. So likewise, if you really calculate out of thirty-two times, somebody already answered, we will be getting ten times having three heads. So this is how the answer would be. Now, how we get this thirty-two possibilities? We have already seen how this ten uh, is possible. Out of thirty-two, is this a magic number, or is this a number which has been already calculated? Right. For that, we want to find out this. How do you call this term? Factor. Right. So this is the expansion of factor. So I will use the uh, board to talk about factor. Can you all see this uh, board? Can you all see this board? Yes or no? Yes. Right. So I simply said factor five. Three. How to find out factor five three? So this can be written as five c three in simple form. So that is equal in a formula. The factor of five divided by factor of three into factor of five minus three. So I will put it in a formula. So this is what we want to find out as a part of the probability. So this formula actually, let's say this is n. This is x. So this is given as n factor in common term divided by x factor into n minus x factor. So don't forget this formula. You have to remember this formula, right? So here I will write for this. Right? I will continue from there. Right? So how we can write down the five factor? Five into all the lower values, four into three into two into one. That is the factor of five. Divide by what is x here? Three. 
So what is the factor of three? Anyone? Three into two into one multiplied by five minus three factor. What is five minus three? Two. So that is two into one. So you can cancel off some of these. So the answer is 10. So this is how the 10 possible uh, combinations are coming in this example. Right? Don't ask this factoring again. So this is how the factoring could be done. Is it clear to everybody? Yes. Right. Now we will move to uh, our slide. Uh, I'm just repeating what we have done. So this is already the formula, right? In fact, I can be given in terms of that. Then we can further move to that. We have already done this, right? So the value is uh, T. Uh, what is the value for that? So we want to find out what is the what is the value for uh, getting three head and two tails? What is the probability value getting three heads and two tails? So this is how we indicate. Uh, basically, this is equal. How did we do? How we come across with this answer? This is uh, five factor. I mean, n is five. A uh, three uh, x is three. So what is the factor of this? That is 10. We have already got the value. So that is multiplied by. So the probability of getting number of heads. So what is the probability of getting number of heads? P to the power, that is half to the power, getting one head, uh, that is to the power three. Multiplied by number of probability of getting number of tails. So what is the probability of getting number of tails? One minus P whole thing to the power two. So because here we don't have problem Y, those are equal probability. Getting X and Y are having equal probability. So we don't have much problem here. Later we will see if you don't have equal probability, we'll have to really calculate this formula. So if you calculate, you will end up with an answer, something like this, 0 0.3125. That is your probability. So in other term, you will end up with something like 10 divided by 32. You will write 10 divided by 32. Okay. Right. Uh, we will uh, look at uh, for other situations. Right, now we are plotting the probability value for all uh, possible heads, right? So number of heads uh, receiving possible is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 heads are, I mean 5, 6 events are possible out of these 6, six events. Obtaining zero number of heads, obtaining one number of heads, obtaining two number of heads, and so forth. So if you look at the probability, so this probability is very nicely smoothed, uh, draw it properly, draw it properly, it will smooth. Uh, it is symmetric. If you cut it here, Cut it properly. <clears throat> if you cut it properly, it is symmetric. It is a symmetric distribution. Right? If you cut it somewhere there, if you cut it somewhere there, it is symmetric. 
right? Right. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, stopped somewhere there. Uh, we didn't go much deeper. So we will see today further continuing. So this is the formula that we can use to find out the probability. All right. This is the formula that we can use the, uh, for the probability. I will uh, just uh, go ahead uh, with the notation. It is called as probability density function. So this probability density function, probability of x i is given as general formula. Uh, this is, uh, I will put up in terms of uh, first uh, the formula, then we'll look at uh, in terms of values. N x into p to the power <coughs> x into 1 minus p to the power n minus x. So this is the important formula that you should remember. It is called as probability density function. Probability density function. Suppose in the earlier case, probability of x equal three. That is our that mean out of five toss. Uh, what is the probability of getting three toss? So that is equal five three factor. Can you remember? So what is the probability of getting one head in a toss? What is the probability of getting one head in a toss? That is half to the power. What is x? 3 into 1 minus p. p is half again in our case to the power 5 minus 3. So here that is how we have done that. So this is 10. We have already looked upon the factor into you see this is half to the power 3 1 minus half is again half to the power 2 so we can say half to the power 5 all together so this is the one which is giving 0 0.3125 you see so we can find out <coughs> the value for the rest as well Right. Can somebody find the value for P equal? Sorry, probability of X equal zero. How we can write? Factor of five and zero into half to the power zero into 1 minus half to the power again the same example right 5 minus 0 right 5 minus 0 so shall i clear this to go to the next step to find out the answer <coughs> yes shall i clear Yes. So, what is next step? Uh, next step. <coughs> I will again same thing. Uh, we said that. <coughs> yeah. First, we will look at what is this uh, factor of five zero. How to look at? That is five factor divided by zero factor into. 5 minus 0 factor. <clears throat> right? 
So five factorize uh, five into four, four into sorry. Five into four into three into two into one. Whole thing divided by zero factor. What is the zero factor? We can't say zero. The value of zero factor is one. So that is important. Value of zero factor is one. Then again five minus zero, which is five, the factor of five. Five into four into 3 into 2 into 1. Sorry. Three into two into So actually, this cancel off. So the answer is one. So when you say for that formula, five zero factor uh, into p, which is half to the power zero, one minus p, which is one minus half to the power five minus zero. You look at the answer so five fact five zero factor is one half to the power zero is one right then one minus half is half half to the power so what is the answer anyone one upon 30 somebody get the answer in digit Decimal point? 0 0.03125. 0 0.03125. 0 0.03125. 0 0 okay, thanks. Right. So likewise, can you try to the rest? So when x equal, so x equal 0, we have seen that. What about x equal 1? Find out x equal 2. Find out x equal 3, that is also we done, we have done. Then x equal 4 and x equal 5. Now I'm going to ask a question from you all. So you'll have to do it uh, for this, right? For this and the rest. Just a second. Yeah, do it for uh, when x equal 1, find out the p value. When x equal 2, find out the p value. When x equal 4, find out the p value. When x equal 5, find out the p value. Actually, since it is symmetric, you will see when x equal 5, you will get the same value as this 0. Point, you, you try and see 3, 1, 2, 5. Try these three, x equal one, two, uh, and four. Try and tell me the value. X equal one, zero point one five six zero point one five six two five. Once again, when x equal zero, we zero three one two five. When x equal 1? 0. 0.15625. What about x equal uh, 2? 0. 0. 0. 0.3125. Right? When x equal 3, again the same. 0. 0.3125. When x equal 4, simply as I said, symmetric, it is the same answer as here, 0 0.15. You can try, right? For the time being, you can try the last one, x equal 5. You can find out the probability as 0 0.03125. Okay. 
Now you see, if you add the probabilities of these, definitely it will be equal to one. Otherwise, something wrong in your calculation, right? So this is the event. These are the probabilities. So these are the events, getting number of heads. These are the events, right? These are these are the uh, events, getting one head. Sorry, getting zero head, getting one head, two head, three head, four head, five head, and these are the respective probabilities. Is it clear? Right. Now today we will continue with uh, what we have. Uh, uh, discuss uh, last time. So I think uh, this is uh, the formula that I have already given. All right. All right. Number of trials. N is the number of trials. X is the number of success out of N trials. All right. In our case, X is the number of heads in n number of trials x is the number of heads in n number of trials right then that is the probability of success that is the probability of failure okay right if i toss a, a coin 20 times what is the probability of getting exactly 10 heads how i can find out so n is given as Sorry. Uh, what is uh, n? What is n? This is n number 20. of 20. Yeah, n is 20 number of uh, trials. So this is n. What about this? This is the x. Right, that is the number of heads obtained. So this is how I can write down because what is this uh, probability? Half, which I can also write as, right? So this is the factor which indicate the N. So this is N, this is X. Factor of 20 and 10 into half to the power this is the x again one minus half getting either head or tail is equal so 20 minus 10 which is 10 so that will be what is a factor of this can you find out the answer 20 factor divided by 10 factor into 10 factor again. Why? Because we are multiplying. So that is equal 20 into 19 into uh, 18 into and so on. Up to goes up to 1. Similarly 10 into 9 into 8 into up to goes to 1. Again multiplied by 10 into 9 into 8 into and goes up to 1. Actually, in the calculator, because uh, in the exam you can use the scientific calculator. Uh, in the scientific calculator, there's a symbol like this. You can use that. There's a symbol like this. I don't know how many of you are having a uh, scientific calculator. Definitely we'll have to purchase a scientific calculator because in the exam also, you are allowed to use the scientific calculator. So N uh, factor of X. So that uh, you can use the scientific calculator, you can get the answer. So what is the answer for this? Anyone? So let us multiply and see. Right? I also don't know exact answer. I don't have a scientific calculator at the moment. So if you get the answer, the answer would be something similar to this. Point one 
seven, six. Right, now let's say if you toss again 20 uh, coins, we toss uh, 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 again the same number of coins 20 times, a coin 20 times. Uh, what is the probability of getting two or fewer heads? So what do you mean by that? Two or fewer heads. So that is actually two or fewer heads mean the, the question is probability of getting x less than or equal to probability of getting less than or equal to. So in the probability structure in the event there is x right in the event Uh, what are the possible, uh, let's say again, the head, what are the possible events? What are the possible events? Zero number of head, one number of head, two number of, so what are the up to, goes up to, anyone? Number of heads, possible number of heads, goes up to 20. Maximum number of heads. In this uh, 20 tosses is uh, 20, is it? So now our question is, what is the probability of getting two or less than two number of heads? Two or less than two number of heads, right? Less than two or two number of heads. So what we can do, we want to add the probabilities of all about this. So at the probability of two, at the probability of one, at the probability of zero. So we can write it as probability of x equal zero plus probability of x equal one plus probability of x equal two. Can we add probability of x equal three? Will it possible? We cannot, why? Because we ask, or the question was asked, two and below, right? So this is how we calculate the probability. For that, definitely we'll have to <coughs> calculate the probability as such. So the x is 20 always, sorry, n is 20 always, x changes for zero. This is for this, the x value is one, then this is for x values. So you get the probabilities, very, very small numbers, all right? Uh, then you add all these values, you will get somewhere around 1.8 into 10 to the power minus four. <coughs> Clear? 1.8 into 10 to the power minus four. Right. Right. All probability distributions are characterized by an expected value and variance. Can you remember the expected value and variance? So this is how we give the notation. So the this is how the distribution we indicate. X is distributed. So write down if you want to. Uh, have some words, x is distributed, this is called distributed, x is distributed binomially, so that will brings what distribution are we talking about, x is distributed binomially with two parameters, n and p, so these are the two parameters in binomial distribution, what are those, n is also important and these are the two parameters in binomial distribution. Two parameters in binomial distribution. Later we will see other types of uh, distribution, what parameters are important. So in binomial distribution, n, it is the number of events, total number of events or the total number of uh, 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 <coughs> 
uh, what do you call when you toss a coin total number of tosses all right so total number of events plus their probability of that particular event maybe success so here we are talking about the event of the probability of the event of success right so that is how it works then you should remember this nnp x is distributed uh, binomially with nnp then the expected value as we did uh, for the discrete distribution nothing different so the expected value is n into p all right the variance can be calculated as n into p into 1 minus p <coughs> right so the expected value is n into p the variance is n into p into 1 minus p the standard deviation you take the square root of uh, n into p into 1 minus p so that is your standard deviation so not uh, the variance will always lies between uh, 0 and 2.25 into n usually note that the variance will always lies between 0 into n minus 0.25 into n whereas uh, 1 minus <coughs> p into 1 minus p reaches maximum at uh, we will show by the graph right in this uh, binomial distribution uh, p <coughs> into 1 minus p becomes maximum at uh, the probability 0.5 when the p is 0.5 suppose let's say in another example uh, sorry another example uh, at the end i will show you in another example let's say p is uh, 0 0.2 what is 1 min minus p then 0 0.8 Eight. so that is how we calculate 1 minus p so if p is 0.2 1 minus p is 0.8 so it's, uh, the p is the reaches sorry uh, p into 1 minus p reaches its maximum when the probability value is p value is success value is success probability value is uh, 0.5 or in other term half so half or 1 over 2 right right uh, you have different values so, so that uh, you can look into that practical uh, problem you are performing a cohort study if the probability of developing disease in an exposed group is uh, 0 0.05 for the study duration then if you uh, randomly sample 500 exposed people so that means uh, here what is the p-value having disease having disease is uh, the p-value right so this p value is this is the p value all right this is the p value uh what is this this is the n p value and this is n so what we try to say is in the prevalence of the disease probability of prevalence of the disease or developing a disease uh, is uh, probability is uh, 0 0.05 Right. randomly you are selecting uh, 500 uh, samples so exposing people of uh, 500 how many do you expect to develop the disease give a margin of error plus or minus uh, one standard deviation so that means plus or minus we call it as one standard deviation mean st sometimes you may ask to give the margin of error to give two standard deviation that is 2 into standard deviation. So that is also possible. Right? So that is more accurate. 
sorry uh, this is the <coughs> more accurate this is uh, much wider right we will see that later once we do the calculation <coughs> all right give the plus or minus one standard deviation for your estimate what is the probability that at most 10 exposed people develop the disease so if you ask uh, such question uh, how we can answer that all right Right, how many do you expect to develop the disease? Give a margin of uh, plus or minus uh, one standard deviation for estimate. So this is the first question. As I pointed out, two things. What is this? This is the N, this is the P. So we need to have N and P, definitely. So the expected value is, if you multiply this, this is 25. So what you can see, what you can answer variance you can calculate uh, right n into p into 1 minus right so what is this this is n this is p so n into p is the expected value that is fine so this is n this is P, this is 1 minus P, okay, if P is this one, 1 minus P is this one. So the variance is this much. So how we are going to explain this, All right? Let's look at the standard deviation. You calculate the standard deviation. You calculate the standard deviation, take the square root of that. Then you can give the answer, the expected value plus or minus one standard deviation. Right, you can say this is the expected value, right? So this is given as expected value plus or minus one standard deviation. So this is the question that has been asked, right? So if it is one standard deviation, what is the minimum value? What is the maximum value? Yeah. Uh, can somebody tell me what is the minimum value? What is the maximum value? So this is uh, minimum value is 25 minus 4.87 that is 21.12 the maximum value is 29 point you just add and deduct the value of standard deviation eight so this is the value so what does it mean actually? So on an average, among the number of, on an average, among the number of uh, people that has been uh, sampled, how many people that we have sampled? 500 people. So among the 500 people sample on an average, around we can say this rough values around 21 to 30 people will have a chance to develop the disease so 21 to 30 people have chance to develop the disease so this is development isn't it so that, that is the question develop the disease all right so 21 to 30 people have chance to develop the disease in simple form so that is how you can give the answer so out of how many that has been sampled 500 people out of 500 people the chance of getting the disease is this one. so this is how for example nowadays statisticians are predicting the value of uh, the present problem covid 19 so that 
depends on how it spreads. That is also a problem because if you have a systematic pattern, then uh, statistician can uh, predict it. But COVID, you, you cannot predict because it is much more uh, difficult in terms of uh, uh, because you don't know how it's contact uh, with people uh, at different forms. Right, the second question, what is the probability that at most, at most mean the maximum uh, 10 uh, exposed subject develop the disease. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to accumulate the values for all this probability. So we already said, uh, but we cannot simply accumulate as such, right? We'll have to do it by hand. If you do it by hand, for example, so we have, right, zero. We have one, we have two, we have three. And goes up to, out of sample, 500 people. All 500 can also get disease. So goes up to 500. But our question here is, what is the probability of getting X, the disease here, less than or equal 10. So that is a, at most, at most mean less than or equal 10. So this is asking for a cumulative probability. As we said, we can say probability of X is equal zero, uh, probability of uh, X equal one, and so on, right? Uh, probably getting zero, getting one, getting two, getting three, it goes up to 10, as we discussed earlier, right? Right, so these are the uh, simple form of uh, accumulating the probabilities. So we'll have to find out uh, one by one, you see? This is for getting x equals zero, so that means zero number of uh, people exposed to the disease out of 500, one person getting uh, exposed to the disease out of 500, two person, three person, four person, etc., 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 can go up to 10 person. Right? Right. Another question, practical question. Right, these are some of the practical questions. We will come to the agriculture as well, agriculture related problems. So, what is uh, I will erase this, otherwise, it will confuse. Yes, you are conducting a case control study of smoking and uh, lung cancer. Smoking and lung cancer. Uh, if the probability of uh, being a smoker among lung cancer case, that is the problem. That means if you are a smoker, if you are a smoker and getting cancer, smoker and cancer has a probability 0 0.6, right? What is the probability that in a group of eight cases that you have, so N is Eight. What is this? This is the p. Point six is the p. Less than two smokers. So less than two smokers mean probability of x. Right, less than or equal to. Let sorry, less than two, not equal. Right. So probability of less than two smokers, right? Less than two smokers. That is first question. Second question: probability of getting more than five smokers. What are the expected value and the variance? Expected value is depend on n and p. Variance is n. P and 1 minus. So we have all the information we can 
thật là đấy người khác thật là à All right. Any questions? Any questions? Anyone would like to ask any questions? Right. Now the answer for the previous uh, question. How many getting? Uh, I mean, uh, zero number of smokers getting cancer. One number of out of eight, huh? so we have eight total number of uh, patients that we are uh, uh, having in the sample, right? Then out of this eight patient, how many? Uh, let's say zero getting. What is the probability of z uh, zero number of uh, people getting cancer, right? Similarly, what is the number? Only one get cancer among the smokers. What is the probability to get cancer, etc., etc., etc.? What is the probability all eight will get the cancer? Right? Again, we can apply in the same concept, get the p value. So, zero number, I mean, zero number of people getting cancer is this much. To calculate so one out of eight people one what is the chance of getting one cancer patient is this 0 0.008 and so on right right now now I want to introduce the table also because uh, there's one table, right? So remember this example. So in this example, what is P? What is P and N? These are the two things that you should remember. What is P? P is 0 0.6, N is eight. Actually, we don't need to calculate all these value from the table itself we can derive. So I'm going to show you the table, which I have sent to you uh, last week. Look at this table. This table is called as, can you all see the table? Can you all see the table? Binomial distribution table. So you see here, uh, two things are important in this table. One is the p-value, probability value. The other one is the n. So this table has been started from uh, giving value for n equal one, n equal two, n equal three, etc., etc. So it is having a probability for different range of value, starting from starting from 0 0.01 goes up to 0 0.5. If you look at the table at the bottom. Right, it is the continuation of the probability of the up. Right, so here the probability starting from 0 0.01 and goes up to 0 0.05, and there are uh, this is continued right at the bottom. You see 0 0.5, 0 0.55, and goes up to 0.99. Right, how to look at the table? How to look at the table? Uh, we will consider the same example where n is 8. What is p? p is 0 0.6. Right? Now we can get the answers for different values because we said the, that table. Can you remember? Getting 
zero number of patient, two, one patient, two patient, three patient, and goes up to eight patient. What is the problem? What is the problem? Right? So to look at the probability, right? So n and p are important. So our p is uh, 0 0.6, n is 7. So look at uh, where the p is uh, coming. So I will erase this and... Uh, yeah, so do you see this is our p, right? This is our n, sorry, uh, this is our n. So now, when you want to look at uh, for the, we said the, the upper value, p value, we look at this range of value. When you want to look at this table has been arranged in such a way, if you want to have a look on the upper value of p, starting from 0 0.01, and goes up to 0 0.5 let's look at this value if you are looking at the lower p value this p value right if you are looking at the lower p value then you look at the table on this uh, right side right right now what is our target our target is our p value is 0 0.6 so you see here the the first probability value for zero that is my first probability value for zero this is the probability value for one this is the probability value for sorry two right so I will, I will do it uh, once again. So this is the probability value for zero. This is the probability value for one. This is the probability value for two and so on, right? So the last one, this is the probability value for eight. The chance of getting all eight as patient is this the chance right chance of getting six patients i mean uh, six cancer patient out of eight smokers are uh, this is the problem right so likewise we can apply nowadays uh, let's say can you remember there were some problems in previous weeks yeah, I will come to that. Uh, <coughs> any questions uh, identifying this value? So look at these values. Look at these values. These are same value as uh, that we have discussed. Let's look at uh, that value. Sorry. This is the value. So the, uh, here, they are the approximate value, right? So what is the approximate value in uh, four digit here? 0 0.007, right? So likewise, uh, these are the values. Is it understandable for you all? So you can calculate manually, or you can look at the table. Anyone need to clarify the table again? Then you draw the values. So you see the x value is 0, 1, 2, and goes up to 8. So they are respective probability. So you draw the probabilities along with this, uh, the possible outcomes. So we don't need to calculate all the time manually if you have large number of events. If it is a small events, yes, we can calculate, but if it is a large number of events, uh, not necessary to uh, manually do it, but you can use the table. Right, if I ask uh, here, what is the probability? Uh, sorry, 
what is the probability what is the probability of uh, having uh, uh, out of eight patient what is the probability of having the most uh, of uh, three patient or three uh, having cancer out of this eight the most of uh, three is having cancer so how to write that x is less than or equal that is equal you add this plus add this plus add this plus add this you add all these four values and give the value so that is the answer for that similarly if i ask probability of uh, having at least uh, six uh, cancer uh, people out of eight at least six so it is equal or greater than six so how to calculate the greater than or equal six so for that we will have to add this value this value and this value so if you add these three value so that will give the probability of this right any any questions i will come to practical questions in agriculture right dwaraka uh, are you along dwaraka dwaraka are you around dwaraka i around dwaraka dwaraka is not there uh pushpa kumar zero Six zero. Pushpamara, AG six zero. Are you around, Pushpamara? Sampat, Sampat, zero six two. Sampat. No one is around. No? Good. Murshita, zero nine four. Murshita, Susparaja, Susparaj, Madhusha, Susparaj, Madhusha. Are you around? Yes. Sir. Ah, right. Uh, my question is whether were you able to understand that table? Whether. Yes. because i we can get all these probability value looking at that table so my question is whether uh, did you understand how to look at the table yes sir understood sir. you are you are you are you are thorough right yes sir okay so, uh how about jeffrey are you around today jeffrey sahana so yes sir yes sir uh are you thorough with the table how to look at the table yes sir yes sahana if you all cannot uh, hear properly you can send uh, through the chat you can send through the chat isn't it uh any any questions or any clarification don't worry you can send through the chat right uh then i can uh, listen to you yes no re results on chat 
Yes, Sam. Tarsika. Subaraj, are you around? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Subaraj, uh, do you have any problem uh, understanding the binomial table? Uh, no, sir. No, oh, okay. You, you are good. Okay. Anyone having problem? You can send uh, through the chat. No problem. Uh, if you need, I can explain once again. So that is how we look at the uh, what we call the binomial distribution. So easily we can get for any values, right? Uh, yes, we can find out the values for the previous question, right? Less than two smokers, this is the question. Less than two smokers, more than five smokers. So the answer for the less than two smokers is uh, one and zero, right? You add the values. Then for more than, uh, uh, what do you call it? More than five or six, five, uh, more than five means six, seven, and eight. So more than five means six, seven, eight. So you get the answer for that. You add the value for that, All right? So what is the expected value? N, that is eight. P is uh, 0.6, so 4.8. So how we can interpret this uh, eight, uh, 4.8? How the interpretation is uh, possible for, for uh, 4.8? We give the value for this uh, interpretation. How we can interpret this? In this example, on an average, we are getting, on an average, we are getting 4.8 people of the smokers are getting cancer on an average. So how many people were interviewed or how many people were sampled? Eight people on an average. Out of this eight people, who are smoking have chance of getting cancer. 4.8 is the number of people getting chance of cancer. Right? So this is the variance and the standard deviation. So in simple, that is the third question, calculate the variance and the standard deviation. Right, now there's another question. In your case control study of smoking and lung cancer, 60% of cases are smokers uh, versus only 10% of the controls. What is the odds ratio between smoking and lung cancer? Odds ratio is actually, this is how it has been calculated. Odds ratio is P divided by 1 minus p. It is the proportion. So once again, p divided by 1 minus p. Suppose if p is, uh, let's say, 0 0.6 as an example. So in your case control study of smoking and lung cancer, 60% cases are smokers versus only 10% of controls. As an example, uh, what is the odds ratio between the smoking and cancer? Right? So P, if you know the P, the value of the uh, 1 minus P is uh, denominator. So this is how uh, the odds ratio can be calculated. What we try to say is that uh, So this is 60% uh, of them are having lung cancer among the control, right? So that is 60% uh, mean 0 0.6, 0 0.6 uh, divided by 
point O because why? Because uh, point six sixty percent are having uh, uh, study of smoking and lung cancer. Sixty percent are smokers. So what is the non-smokers percentage? That is forty percent. So in terms of uh, probability, it is 0.4. Non-smokers are 0 0.4. So this is 0.6 is a smokers, 0.4 is non-smokers. Right? Versus only 10% of our controls. So 10% mean 0.1. So 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.9. So if you get that answer, roughly this is percentage all right so the answer not percentage this is not percentage these are odd ratio these are odd ratio all right odd ratio is 13 point uh, all right so the odd ratio that means, so this is uh, talking about uh, the smoking, this is uh, non-smokers, and these are the controllers. So what we try to explain here in this 13.5, if you consider smoking and non-smoking, you have 13 Point five times more. I will write it here. You have thirteen point five times more. You have thirteen point five times more. Right? You have thirteen point five times more getting cancer. For smokers, than non-smokers. So that means smokers are having uh, thirteen point five times more, right? If non-smokers are having one time getting the cancer, the smokers are having. 13.5 times more getting cancer under the condition of smoking. So you see, smoking is inducing cancer. So that is how this odd ratio can be good. So don't worry about this odd ratio. Surely we teach this at master level. Don't worry about that, all right? Uh, yes, this is coming back to the uh, revision question. Uh, what is the probability of getting exactly five heads in 10 point process, right? What is the exactly of getting five heads in 10 uh, point process? So this is the probability 0.5 to the power 5, 1 minus 0.5 to the power 10 minus 5. So it's the same thing. So this is the factor. So if you solve that, that is the answer. A coin toss uh, can be thought of as an example of a binomial distribution with n is equal one, all right? So this is a capital N, right? And P is equal 0.5. What are the expected value and the variance of point plus? Expected value and the variance. Anyone? Expected value. What is the expected value? Point plus can be thought of as an example of a binomial distribution with n. Right? Same same thing. And what is the variance? Variance is n into p into p. So what is the answer anyone? The first one, isn't it? Right. So uh, you can answer some of those. So these are maybe some 
I haven't introduced the term yet, except this binomial, normal exponential uniform. We will talk about that a little later. Uh, these are some questions, right? You can just do. Uh, some proportions. A proportion is a just binomial count divided by n. So, for example, if we have a sample of 200 cases, 60 smokers, we find 60 smokers out of 200. So, what is the proportion, right? So, statistics for proportions are similar to the binomial cuts, but differ from the at the end. So, again, the same concept uh, for our uh, what we call expected value and the variance. Uh, right, so take this as a home. Yeah, this is not homework, this is explained later on in the histogram. Uh, construct a binomial distribution uh, histogram with, uh, suppose, let's say you are number of uh, observe a number of events, uh, eight, the probability is 0.15. But in the second case, the pro number of events is same, 8. The P is 0.5. The third case, number of events is small and it is same. The P is increased. Now, I'm going to compare these two histograms. I'm going to, so here the numbers are same, which is small. But the probability value, P values are different. So in, under that circumstance, how we can compare the histograms. Right, so this is the example for the first one. N is equal 8, P is equal 0.5. How this distribution looks like? If you connect all these points, how distribution looks like? Is it a symmetric or is it a right skewed or is it a left skewed? Anyone? Right skew. Left skew. With right skew. Right. It is a right skew. You see, when the probability is very small, when the probability, when the p-value is very small, the, the distribution is a right skew. Right. Let's look at when the probability is uh, exactly 0.5. How it's look like this distribution? Symmetry. Yeah, it's symmetric, right? So you see uh, the third one, the same sample size. What is happening uh, to the uh, histogram? Is it symmetric? Left skewed. Or is it uh, uh, right skewed or left skewed? Left skewed. Left skewed. You see, I have shown you three different situations. Right, similarly, now what I am doing is I am going to in increase the sample size. When you increase the sample size, you see, <coughs> now my sample size is 15, right? So can you tell me whether it is left skewed or right skewed or is it uh, symmetric with a high p-value? It is again left skewed or right skewed? Left skewed. Left, left skewed. Left skewed. Now, Keeping the sample size, uh, I mean, sorry, keeping the probability as it is, I'm going to increase the sample size, right? Same p-value, now I am increasing the sample size. So what is happening to the distribution? Earlier, the sample size is only 15 and the p is high, 0.8. Now I'm not changing the p, but I'm increasing the sample size. So. What can you say about this nature now? Earlier it is very skewed to left. Now what is happening in the histogram? If you have, let's say, sample size 50, now what can you say about uh, this distribution compared to the previous? Yeah? Yeah, anyone? Somebody said. 
is skewed to left but uh, distribution to left side is very large yeah earlier it was uh, on left side fine when the sample size was uh, less uh, the distribution was on the left now i have increased the sample size to 25 then 50 now what can you say about this distribution it is approaching towards a symmetric distribution isn't it when the, when we increase the sample size even the skewed distribution try to become a symmetric distribution so that is very important so later we will talk about that is called as normal distribution normal distribution is a symmetric distribution so when you increase the sample size even the probability is not balanced this probability is not balanced is it because if it is 0 0.05 <coughs> sorry if it is 0 0.5 it is balanced this is unbalanced success and failure is it balanced more more, more success here because Point 0.8 is more success. What is the failure? 1 minus point 0.8, which is point 0.2. So the failure is uh, less in terms of probability. But we can show that probability become, probability distribution becomes symmetric when you increase the sample size. So that is the concept of uh, <coughs> increasing the sample size. Right, now further on constructing the size to 70, you see I am increasing the size to 70, ultimately it becomes as a normal distribution. Right, now we will go to the <coughs> probability distribution of uh, the other section, discrete probability distribution, other probability distribution, discrete probability distribution, this is Poisson probability distribution. Right, before coming to the Poisson uh, probability distribution, <coughs> I can uh, talk about uh, some other practical examples uh, using binomial distribution. Right, uh, yeah, give me a second. Anyone having problem uh, understanding? So I don't see anything on the chat, so that uh, I will continue. So I have few questions, a few examples. First one, uh, let's say milk food industry. Uh, uh, let's say this uh, fresh milk, flavored fresh milk. How, how many of you are drinking flavored fresh milk? New Deal, uh, <clears throat> Rich Life, uh, Highland, flavored fresh milk, vanilla flavored, chocolate flavored, for example. Right now, my question is a particular industry producing every day 10,000 10, milk packets in that factory outlet. So they are producing 10,000 packets per day. So on an average, they are receiving 500 packets from the dealers as defects. What do you mean by defects? What do you mean by defects? That means sometimes during the packing, Images. yeah, during the packing, sometimes it has been not sealed properly, as one example. So it's spoiled because it is a milk product. <clears throat> that is one thing. Second thing, maybe if they are not putting into the fridge or any other uh, cooling uh, mechanism, then it may defect. So on an average, they are getting a return. 500 defects. So my question is, a quality controller take a sample of right, take a sample of uh, just a second. Huh? Right. 
just take a sample of uh, of 20 all right so the sample size is 20 so the question is if i take the sample of 20 what is the probability of getting out of this sample what is the probability of uh, out of this 20 sample getting the defects less than or equal to so what is uh, how we can find out this is a practical question so this factory is producing 10000 packets per day on return as a defect they are getting 500 on that batch a quality controller takes a sample of 20 what is the chance of getting the defect defect packs less than or equal to 2 so this is a typical practical question so if it is uh, p is equal less than or 2 that is equal p x equal 0 plus p x equal 1 plus p x equal Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that? So that is what we want to find out. Now, if you have the probability structure, so xi out of 20 sample, only no, no uh, sample have defect. There's a probability, no sample will have probability. Out of 20, only one is having defects. The other possibility is out of 20, only two is having defects. The other possibility is out of 20, only three is having defects. So how many maximum defects that you would find in that example? 22. Yeah. Maximum 20. possible. Yeah, 20. Maximum possible defects is 20. So for each of these, we can find out the problem, right? Now I have shown you find out the probability. How can you give the probability for zero, one, and two by looking at the binomial distribution table, right? Here, what is n? Twenty. Twenty. Good. What is p? P is actually here having defects. So what is the probability of having defects? P value. P value is not given directly, but uh, you can find out the P value. What is P value? It is the proportion of defects. So we are getting 500 as a return every day out of how many products per day? 10,000. Out of 10,000, we are getting return 500. So the defect probability is 500 divided by 10,000. What is 500 divided by 10,000? 0 0.0. 0 0.05. So we have the p-value. We have the n. Can you try? <coughs> I'm not sure whether the table has these values. Can you try? Is that the value n equal 20? Yes. Yes, n equal 20 is there. No problem. So can you tell me what is the, what are the values that we like to add? Which column that we need to look at it? 
So we need to look at the values of here. Yeah. So this is the this is the column that we need to look at because n is twenty. So what is the p value? Zero point zero five, right? So what are the values that we we'll have to add? We we'll have to add this value. Then we we'll have to add this value because the probability uh, x equals zero plus probability x equal one plus probability x equal two. So add these three values. If you add these three values, that will be your answer in simple term. So I have shown you how to calculate manually also. Now you can use the table. Why there is no values here? Can somebody tell me what is the problem? So it should Minus have six. Huh? Yes, yes. Yes, Pioni. Who said? Who answered? Sahana. Oh, Pioni. Right. Oh, who have answer? Just give the answer. You may be correct. Those are beyond the four decimals. Yeah, actually, the, if you look at at the four decimal point, we can say they are having a zero value. So if you add these probability, it should be equal to one. So these are very small values, so that uh, it is not in the table. We can consider that as zero, right? Clear. So this is how we look at the table. If I ask uh, another question, what is the probability of having uh, x greater than or equal? Uh, sorry. What is the in the same question? If I ask what is the probability of x greater than two, what you will do? We already know. This value, so two and less than two. So we are asking it is, it is actually probability of x equal three plus probability of x equal four up to x equal twenty. So we can say that is one minus this value. Anyone uh, who did the, already the calculation? What is the value of that? Zero point nine two four. Nine. Two four six. Okay. So you see, one minus. I mean, the probability of this x greater than two is equal one minus this. So that is a very small value. Very small value. Closer to zero point uh, uh, zero. Uh, let's say seven. Right, seven no eight. So that is a very small value, right? That is one example. The second example, uh, let's say, among the disease nowadays, uh, have you all heard about uh, a problem with farmers in uh, specifically three four districts? Farmers having some problem. Have you heard about this disease? Anyone who heard about this disease? Yes, sir. What is that? Kidney disease. Yeah, kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease. So, which area? By district uh, is mostly affected. Anyone? Anuradhapura, Pollanarva, Nagpur. Yeah, the northwestern Anuradhapura, uh, Pollanarva. What else? Three more district. I mean, three districts mostly affected. Anuradhapura, Pollanarva, and Ampara. Not really Ampara, Mathala district. Right, 
So these are the three districts have been affected by this uh, particular disease, right? So now we can do a small study among the farmers, let's say, among the farmers, uh, if you, after doing the interviewing of, uh, let's say 10,000 farmers who are using, let's say inorganic fertilizer, I will put it as IOF, inorganic fertilizer. Among the farmers, we have taken 10,000 farmers who are using inorganic fertilizer, right? They have been uh, interviewed and we said uh, maybe 2,000 of them are having 2,000 of them are having this problem, CKD problem among the farmers of IOF, inorganic fertilizer users having uh, kidney diseases of uh, 2,000. Now, if I select uh, randomly five, uh, 500 farmers, right? If I select 500 farmers from these districts, so what is the probability of getting kidney disease uh, of, uh, let's say, at least, at least uh, 100 farmers? Not 100, let's say 200 farmers. What is the probability of getting at least 200 farmers with uh, this disease? So we have the P. That is 2,000 divided by 10,000, right? N is 500. So we can find out the value, right? This is a, this is a big number, right? We can find out still, right, as an example. So that is how uh, we can look at some applications. Industry among the farmers. So we said kidney disease, having disease or not having disease. So two outcomes, having disease or not having disease. Right? So there are only two outcomes. Uh, having defects, or not having defects. In the previous example, having defects and not having defects. So likewise, uh, we can look at some of the examples. Uh, I don't want to go much uh, detail onto that. So if you know at least uh, with respect to some application, that would be better. You can use uh, the binomial table. Suppose if the binomial table has not been given, then uh, the questions that we ask is very light. That means we, we might ask to find out uh, some probability values. Let's say uh, if I ask probability of uh, x less than 2, that is actually adding the probability of x equals 0 and adding the probability of x equal 1. So we can find out this easily using the earlier formula, probability density function formula. Right? Right. Any questions? Any questions that you would like to ask from me? Before we wind up. Uh, tomorrow, no classes. There are some examination going on here. So I'll have to attend for the examination. So no classes tomorrow. Uh, Thursday, I will let you know by tomorrow. All right. So Amsatwani can ring me tomorrow afternoon so that uh, I will tell you precisely because uh, Nowadays, uh, final year students are doing research.
So I'll be at Kilnochi only for these three days. So they are coming to meet me to get some consultancy on uh, statistics for their research work. Most probably I will be helping them uh, uh, throughout. So maybe um, tomorrow a full day I have exam. So I may help uh, on Thursday as well. So there may be a chance uh, to cancel the lectures on Thursday. Right. Uh, any questions? How about next week? Next week, uh, you all are on holiday. Are you all on holiday next week? Or you all are already in holiday, listening <laughs> at home. So, any, any, anything? Uh, what about uh, next week? Any, anyone? 